an introvert, but I love people. But I have to admit that they wear me out, and then I need time alone with God to refuel. That's just how God wired me, and He wired some of you the very same way. But my mother was an introvert who ultimately lived as a recluse, and I don't want to turn out like that. So I have been pondering ways to make sure that I keep community central to life. Whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, we all need authentic community. But the problem is that a lot of us are individualists. We don't mean to be, it's just part of our American DNA. We were taught not to depend on other people and that the real heroes were those who pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. But that's not a biblical idea. God wants us to experience biblical community together. How do we do that? Well, one way is to consider the character of the triune God. Did you ever stop to think that God exists as Trinity, three in one, and when He's doing that, He is modeling community for us. He has been community since before creation. He will be uh, for the rest of time. And He didn't have to be, because actually it's caused Him a lot of problems. Theologians for centuries have been trying to figure out how do we explain this mystery uh, it's difficult, and, and for our enemies, uh, they have used this doctrine to say that we are, have many gods, and that's not true. But God doesn't care how difficult it is, because it's a picture of community, and He wants us to get it. After all, about 44% of the New Testament letters teach us how to get along with one another. They're the one another statements, and we find them 59 times as commands in the Bible. Love one another, accept one another, bear one another's burdens, live in harmony, care for one another, be patient with one another, and so on and so on. The greatest commandment is in Matthew 22, 37, and Jesus says that on this commandment all others depend. What is it? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Yet, so many churches are strong on teaching, and they should be, but weak on community, and we need both. I like Andrew Kirk's definition of the church. He says, what the New Testament means by the church is not an institution which owns property, performs rites and organizes meetings, or even one that plans strategies to evangelize unreached people. Rather, it is a group of ordinary people who, because they are experiencing the immense grace of a compassionate God, are learning how to overcome hostility between people, forgive and trust one another, share what they have, and encourage one another in wholesome and joyous relationships. And there are so many benefits to authentic biblical community. Here's one worth thinking about. We would all be healthier. According to the head of psychiatry at Stanford Universities, one of the best things a man can do for his health is to marry a woman. And one of the best things a woman can do for her health is to nurture relationships with girlfriends. He contends that quality girlfriend time combats depression in women, and that it's just as good for your health as jogging or going to the gym. He says there's a tendency to think that when we're exercising, we're doing something good for our bodies, but when we're with our friends, we're actually wasting time. He says it isn't true. Failure to create and maintain quality personal relationships is as dangerous to our physical health as smoking. So here's a call for all you extroverts out there. Invite some of us introverts to lunch or to coffee. We need the encouragement and maybe we'll get better at taking the initiative. We all yearn for authentic community and through Christ it can be a reality.